Welcome. Thank you. I'm going to mute you now, Melanie. I'm going to mute you too, Lona. It's just me and Claudia now. Okay. Dan, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll cue you up. It's dialing. It'll take just a second. I'll start talking, Claudia, and then I'll hand it off to you right after that. And then just tell people while you're running for Congress what you have to offer, your normal stump speech to open it and all that kind of stuff. So it's that, it's that one way or the other. Um, and then we'll be done, oh, you know, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how many good questions we still have left at the end. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Claudia will be with us in just a moment. We want more neighbors in the congressional district to join the call. If you have a question of Claudia, by all means, please, please press zero. That's zero on the keypad on your phone if you have a question. We want to take as many live questions as we can fit in tonight. So if you do have a question of Claudia, please, by all means, press zero. Also, if you'd like email updates between now and essentially two weeks from now, uh, provide us your email address. You can do that by pressing seven, seven on the keypad on your phone. Uh, seven is the uh, keypad, uh, is the uh, number to hit if you want to provide us your email address. Um, zero uh, is the uh, keep, uh, keypad number you hit if you have a question. So again, welcome everybody. Welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. We're going to be on for the next 45 minutes to an hour. Claudia will be on with our opening remarks in just about 60 seconds. If you have a question of Claudia, by all means, please press zero. That's zero on the keypad on your phone. Uh, no questions off base. We'll try to get as many in as we possibly can during this telephone town hall. So again, one more time. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. If you have a question of Claudia, please press zero. And if you want to provide us your email address so we can provide you email updates between now and two weeks from now, which is primary day, please press seven. That's seven on the keypad on your phone. Claudia, take it away, please. Oh, hi. Welcome, everybody who's on the call. This is Claudia Tenney, I'm running for Congress in uh, the 22nd Congressional District, and uh, I'm running because I think that we're at a crossroads in this country. Uh, I think that we, it's time for principled Republican leadership that we haven't been getting from our current representative. Um, as the top conservative in New York State, and I'm, I'm ranked as the top conservative, I think we need to start uh, gutting back in line with our constitutional principles, the principles that made this country so great, individual rights and freedom, which are preserved in our, not only in our Constitution but in our Bill of Rights. Um, and as uh, a member of the State Assembly for the last four years, I've demonstrated that I will stand for those principles. I have, in spite of what you might have heard, I have never voted for a tax increase. In fact, I voted for the only tax decrease that has come before the State Assembly uh, in uh, December 2011. Um, I continually vote against mandates, unfunded mandates passed down to our local governments and schools. Um, I am a strong supporter of, uh, of supporting, I mean, I'm a strong supporter of growing jobs in this community by lowering taxes and reducing the size of government. Uh, I've continually called for the need to eliminate fraud and waste in our Medicaid and our social welfare programs. I don't think people realize that we've reached a point uh, where we are at about $58 billion a year out of the New York State budget just for Medicaid dollars alone and several hundred million and billion more for um, our uh, other welfare programs that are providing benefits not tr to our truly needy but are part of a, a whole fraud and waste scheme that is not being tackled uh, by our state government representatives. Uh, I wish. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions, uh, if there are any. If not, I'll, I'll uh, talk a little bit about my record versus my opponents. Um, this year in New York State's uh, budget, I voted against a $57 million uh, revenue that would t uh, provide for a, a weapons and ammunition database that I felt was unconstitutional. Um, I voted against $7 billion in pork that would have been handed out uh, taxpayer money used to prop up corporations and friends of the governor and other politically connected leaders. I voted against $7 billion in interest payments alone to, to uh, use the personal income tax to, uh, for backdoor borrowing schemes. Uh, I've uh, you know, voted against the state funding for late-term abortions. Obviously, I'm the biggest uh, uh, proponent of getting rid of the SAFE Act. Uh, I'm the first legislator in New York State to propose a total repeal of the SAFE Act. I voted against it. 
Um, just a little bit about my opponent, just to contrast us. Uh, my opponent has voted to fund Obamacare and to he voted against the delay of Obamacare. He also voted to raise income taxes and payroll taxes. He's voted twice to raise the debt ceiling, which would cost trillions for our children and grandchildren. Uh, he is uh, the only Republican who has voted for late term, the federal funding of late term abortion. He has uh, voted in, uh, recently on a bill that would provide uh, much of uh, the uh, funding for proposing Common Core, which many people, you know, and I disagree with Common Core. I think it's a uh, state program, a state's rights issue, and that the federal government shouldn't be intervening to provide uh, common core programs. So uh, those are some of the issues that are, you know, big time federal issues that I feel that my opponent is weak on. Uh, I would like I would like to go in and see a total repeal and an elimination of common core as well. Claudia, this is Kurt, and I'm your host tonight. Thank you so much for your opening remarks. Uh, for now, right now, let's uh, let's remind people if they do have a question, please press zero. That's zero on the keypad on your phone. And if you'd like to provide us your email address so we can provide you email updates between now and two weeks from today, please press seven. That's seven on the keypad on your phone. Claudia, you ready for your first question? Sure, I'd be happy to take it. All right, it's going to be from John. John, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. John, where in the district are you from, and what's your question, please? John, go ahead. You're up. All right, I'll read John's question. If you're elected, what are they going to do about the VA scandal in Buffalo, the one concerning benefits? Claudia? Uh, well, I'm not aware of what – I'm very aware of the VA situation. Right now, until we have a change in leadership from the top and a change in leadership in the VA, I'm not aware of a particular situation in Buffalo since it's actually outside the area here. I have had uh, friends who have had difficulties actually with the Buffalo VA, but one of the things I would do right now, just because so many of our veterans are vulnerable and waiting in line to get care. Uh, my son, by the way, is an active duty Marine, and uh, this, this issue is near and dear to my heart. I think that if the taxpayers are going to, to pay, and I think that it's appropriate, as our federal constitution calls for uh, the uh, national defense, that's one of the main things that the federal government is created for, I would support maybe having allowing our veterans to be reimbursed to get care at private hospitals and other institutions so they won't be waiting in line, they won't be receiving substandard care. And I think that that would be, until we are able to reform and revive the VA system, I think that would be something that we can do in the interim to protect our veterans and to be sure that they're not waiting in line and they're getting the care that they need. All right. Well, we're ready for another question right away if we can. It's going to be from George. George, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. George, where are you from? What's your question, please? Well, I'm Parrish, New York. My question is about the Safe Gun Act they have that uh, the uh, governor put in and was voted on. Are they, I want, are they going to, are you for repealing that, that law? Yes. Actually, as I indicated in my opening statements, I am the first legislator in New York State to call for the total repeal of the SAFE Act. I voted against it. Remington Arms is in my assembly district, and it is also in the 22nd Congressional District, and many other of our lawful gun owners have been negatively affected by this. And uh, we are, you know, I'll do everything I can to repeal it. We are involved in a lawsuit uh, to eliminate some of the, the uh, issues with the SAFE Act. I also voted against the New York State budget because they secretly put in $57 million, although we found it in the Assembly, $57 million in taxpayer money to put together a weapons database to track lawful gun owners and an ammunition database to track the purchases of ammunition by lawful gun owners, which I'm completely opposed to as, uh, as an advocate for our Second Amendment rights and a gun owner. I, this is just totally unacceptable. Um, let's take another question in just a minute, but we have a polling question we want to ask for you. If the vote were held today, mind you, it's in two weeks, who would you vote for? Would you vote for Claudia Tenney? If you would, press 1. Richard Hanna, press 2. So who are you going to vote for? Claudia, press 1. Richard, vote 2. We appreciate your candidates in voting, and thank you very much. We're going to take uh, David next, if we can. David, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. David, where are you from, and what's your question, please? I'm from Sequoia. 
And uh, I would like to know why uh, Claudia votes to uh, raise uh, taxes all the time. Thank you. I have never voted in my four years in the Assembly to raise taxes. In fact, I have several bills in the State Assembly that would reduce taxes on income tax, property tax, estate tax, would eliminate, lower the tax and eliminate the tax altogether and may expand the exemption to be unlimited as it is in Florida. The flyers that you may have been receiving from the Unity Pack, which is a pro-gay marriage pack, doing $600,000 worth of, of advertising and, and ads on behalf of Richard Hanna are completely false. Uh, I've never voted for a tax increase. I've only voted for increase or decreases. And uh, those uh, bills that they're citing are my votes against the corrupt Governor Cuomo's budget that is rubber stamped by corrupt Speaker Sheldon Silver and the top six Republicans in the state, of which I'm number one, all voted against the budget. So all those sort of phony tax initiatives that you're going to hear about from the governor really amount to nothing but more cost to the New York taxpayers, which is why New York is last, and we are, we are last in business friendliness. We are the uh, highest tax state in the country. We have the second highest energy burden. And as a small business owner, I think some people may not be aware my family owns a business that was started in Shenango and Madison County, and part of it's now in Oneida and Shenango County. We have about 80 employees, and we are very negatively affected by uh, the taxes in New York and the very unfriendly business climate that we have with the regulatory burden. And so in spite of the flyers you may have read, they're completely false. I've never voted for a tax increase. And one has to ask, how could I be the top conservative in all of New York, including the entire assembly, and the entire New York State Senate if I voted the way that these commercials are portraying me. Our next, um, polling, our next polling question goes like this. Who would like to volunteer for Claudia's campaign? If you have an interest, there's two weeks left, please press 1. Press 1 on the keypad on your phone. We'll get back to you tomorrow sometime. So if you'd like to volunteer, please press 1, 1 on the keypad on your phone. Now we're going to take Lynn. Lynn, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Lynn, where you're from, and what's your question, please? I'm from... Oneida County, and I want to know exactly how pro-life Claudia Tenney is. Is she pro-life 100% or is she pro-life except for this or except for that or except for something else? Okay. Thank you for the question, Lynn. I am 100% uh, pro-life. I have a 100 rating from the New York State Right to Life, and I am the endorsed candidate from the Susan B. Anthony List, which is a national organization that endorses women pro-life candidates. And I re recently received the CareNet Award for my positions on uh, life issues. Thank you. And with that, let's do another uh, polling question, interesting topic. What is the most important issue for Congress to address? If you think it's economy and jobs, press 1. If it's budget and spending, press 2. Immigration reform, press 3. Health care reform, press 4. If it's something else, press 5. Here goes again. What is the most important issue for Congress to address? Press 1 for economy and jobs, 2 for budget and spending, press 3 for immigration reform, press 4 for health care reform, or press 5 for something else. Thank you so much for your participation. We're going to take Charles next. Charles, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Charles, where are you from in the district? What's your question, please? Oneida, and I'd like to know what Claudia is going to do about school taxes. They've more than doubled for me in the last 10 years, and they keep going up 4 to 5 percent every year. Uh, thank you, Charles. Uh, actually, on the federal level, there's nothing I can do about your school taxes other than I oppose Common Core, No Child Left Behind, and Race to the Top funding, which has been forced on our local school districts and costs our school district and property tax owners uh, more money than they should be paying. Um, in the New York State Assembly, I have continually voted against mandates that would increase the property taxes and school taxes. I also voted for what they call the 2% property tax cap in 2011, which keeps property taxes to a minimum. Uh, as far as the property tax freeze that you may have been hearing about on TV commercials and you may be seeing in uh, you know, the numerous flyers that are coming in every single day, from Unity Pack, which is a pro-gay marriage, gay rights uh, initiative, uh, which is spending almost $600,000 on Richard Hanna's campaign. 
because he is a, you know, a member of the LGTB caucus in Congress. Um, those groups are talking about what they call Andrew Cuomo's property tax freeze, which has been completely panned by all credible conservative agencies across the state, all of the local governments, all the county governments, because it is really nothing more than a gimmick, and in the end will cost property tax or taxpayers more, and probably about, they're estimating about 40% of the upstate residents in New York will receive absolutely no benefit and no rebate from this phony tax initiative, which is why, as part of the omnibus tax bill that we had in the New York State Assembly and the Senate this year, as part of the budget, I voted against it because it was bad for our local property tax owners. I will continue to fight to try to, as long as I'm, you know, the next few weeks, that's all we have left of the assembly session where we're going to be voting. I'm hoping they'll advance some of the bills we have to reduce property taxes. Um, again, that's something you can't do on the federal level. It's only something you can do on the state level. But uh, I'm a property taxpayer, not only at my business, but also at my home. And that's a huge problem. I've also been fighting um, for an initiative that would require the Oneida Indian Nation to pay taxes because they owe nearly a billion in back taxes and almost 500,000 of that billion in back taxes is property tax. And we are all bearing the burden for the payment of those taxes. So I've been fighting for that for nearly 20 years. And unfortunately, Governor Cuomo, my opponent, Richard Hanna, and numerous others have agreed to forego the payment of property taxes on behalf of the Oneida Indian Nation, which has been a devast is devastating for this community, but I'll continue to fight to, see, to make sure that those taxes are paid. But I thank you very much for the question. Great question. Well, thank you so much. We're going to take another question in just a minute. I want to remind people that if they did have a question of Claudia, pre please press zero, zero on the keypad on their phone. And if they want to provide us their email address so they get email updates between now and two Tuesdays from now, please press seven. That's seven on the keypad on your phone. Another polling question, will you be voting in the Republican primary? If you are, press one. If you're not going to, press two. And if you're not sure, press three. Will you be voting in the Republican primary? One is yes, two is no, and three, you're just not sure. Meanwhile, while you're voting, we're going to take John. John, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. John, uh, where are you from, and what's your question, please? Hi, I'm from Rome, New York. And my question is, do you, I know that uh, Claudia has been doing a lot of things, but there's a lot of things that are being done you know, by the governor and others that are underhanded, and they're, they're not right. And it's our people are really hurting because of a lot of the things that the governor's done. And um, two things um, on the uh, the marriage equality. I mean, he kept the Democrats in Albany and forced them to vote. You know, for this, it's really not marriage equality. It's just a matter of twisting things so that they can get votes from these people. And there's a lot of a lot of children here that are hurting because of this. And also, my sister-in-law is uh, mentally handicapped, and the mileage has been cut from the caretaker. She lives in a home in Camden, and the mileage has been cut, and their benefits are cut so that they have to go out and get part-time jobs besides just taking care of these um, people that are in need of care 24 hours. You know Claudia, what are your thoughts on what John was saying, please? John uh, raises a really critically, a couple of critically important points that people need to understand about the state. Number one, on the Marriage Equality Act, that was something that the governor forced through. Um, he used that vote to manipulate people into voting one way or another. Um, I voted against the act because I didn't think it provided enough freedoms for people who, for example, many Catholics believe that marriage is a sacrament and that you cannot change the definition of uh, marriage between a man and a woman. I know many people support civil unions, which was also an option, but I voted against that. Um, I, I, vote, I voted against the, uh, the, the so-called Marriage Equality Act because of the religious freedoms and the failure to protect those. The second issue is, is really important, very near and dear to my heart. And, uh, John, I, I know it's tough for people with special needs, especially last year as we faced from the governor almost a $200 million cut to people with special needs. And I think some people don't realize that one of the provisions of the New York State Constitution, which I know many of my colleagues probably haven't read, but I have it with me all the time and I read it and I keep it in my desk, I have it in front of me right now. One of the obligations of the state is actually to provide and care for our people with special needs. And I think many people forget that and that is an important part of uh, protecting uh, this. Th those are some of the appropriate 
spending expenditures that we have for the state. I voted against the cuts to, uh, to the, for those programs last year, and some of them are reinstated, and many of them were not. And uh, we launched an enormous campaign, uh, many of us, uh, to restore those, that funding. Some was restored, but it wasn't restored completely. And we will continue to do that to protect those people who we have an obligation under our state constitution, of which we all take an oath to uphold, to protect those people, our truly needy in society. So that is a, a great question. and Thank you so much, John. And um, we are doing everything we can to protect your sister and the families who are, are trying so hard to help their loved ones. So we greatly appreciate the question. And, uh, and we're, uh, we've got your back. We're trying as hard as we can to get the rest of the funding restored. So thank you. Do you need a ride to the polls is the next question. If you do, just press 1 on the keypad on your phone. We'll help you out on that. Do you need a ride to the polls? Press 1. Press 1 on the keypad on your phone. We'll give you a call back and make arrangements if you need a ride to the polls. Uh, before we take Martin, who's next, I want to remind people, if they did have a question, please press 0, 0 on the keypad on their phone. And if you wanted to uh, provide us with your email address, please press 7. As stated before, Martin's next. Martin, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Martin, where are you from, and what's your question, please? I'm from the Binghamton area, just west of Binghamton and Endicott, and I have a rather interesting question, which is the the foundation of our government Three co-equal branches, and the executive branch has a responsibility to carry out the laws. The laws were passed, and it seems like the executive of this country thinks that he is immune or uh, not required to carry out the laws. What would you do to hold the executive branch accountable for being the responsible agent to make sure that the laws that are passed are, in fact, carried out? Thank you for the question, Martin, and amen. This is the most lawless president I've witnessed in my 53 years as a student of the Constitution and as a lawyer who's involved in federal cases where the interpretation of the Constitution is required. Uh, so many of the uh, uh, provisions that the uh, president has carried on, President Obama, uh, I mean, we can just start forward and work back. Let's start with the Bergdahl situation. With my son, I, as I've indicated earlier, he's an active duty Marine. He took an oath of office as a soldier to go out and fight um, for this country. And yet we're giving up five dangerous, murderous, uh, murdering terrorists for one uh, deserting uh, soldier that was in the battlefield while we're still in conflict. And he is not a prisoner of war. He's an enemy combatant. And what I would do is just, I mean, we could go through all the different things from the IRS, uh, you know, all the different scandals from the Obama administrations, which aren't phony scandals, which are legitimate. I think we need to continue to pursue uh, the lawsuits that have been brought. I know Rand Paul has brought a lawsuit against the governor on the NSA and also on the, um, on the uh, uh, I just mentioned it, on the IRS issue. I think that we should consider, I know people think it's an, a rash move, but we can consider articles of impeachment against the president for this Bergdahl scandal. I'd like to investigate and see if it's something that is optional. Uh, the, the fast and furious with this uh, Attorney General Holder is unacceptable. The Benghazi situation is just completely corrupt. And I might add that my opponent, Richard Hanna, refused to, to, to support the um, resolution for um, the select committee, to give the select committee special powers to investigate back in January of 2013. And as a result, we weren't able to get anything. We had all these hearings because we didn't have any power. It took a private organization, Judicial Watch, to finally go to federal court and get the documents we needed to begin the process of finding out just exactly what happened in Benghazi so that in the future we can protect American citizens in harm's way, whether they're foreign service agents, contractors, or members of our military. And we have a primary obligation to do that. And after much criticism uh, from me, uh, after, after the fact, Richard Hanna finally signed on to the resolution some 16 months later in May. And, uh, and in fact said, I signed on hours after the resolution was passed. But really, the resolution was started in January of 2013, and he did not join the resolution until I criticized him after his appearance on a radio show, where basically he, he agreed with Hillary Clinton, what difference, in fact, does it make, or what difference at this point does it make. 
and then finally joined the resolution on May 6, uh, 2014. And you can look that up because it's all public information. So I would pursue every avenue we can, and not, to, not the least of which is uh, removing this president from office, either by re-election, uh, look seriously into articles of impeachment, and pursue lawsuits. Unfortunately, we have to do that at our expense, or we could use private uh, entities to try to make sure that the, to bring this president back in line, because at this point, you know, he doesn't seem to have any bounds or understand really what the role of these co-equal government, government entities are. And I might add one more thing. I don't mean to be long-winded, but it's a, a question. It's one of the main reasons I'm running. Um, we have an bloated executive branch that is completely out of control, and by this huge bureaucracy that we've created in Washington, it has served to suffocate our rights as protected under the Constitution in so many ways, our freedoms, our rights, everything that is happening to us, it's because of this bloated, out of control government bureaucracy where our debt is exploding to the trillions. And, uh, you know, again, my opponent, Richard Hanna, voted twice to raise the debt ceiling without concessions. And I think we need a representative in Congress and more brave souls to go to Congress who will stand up to this president and demand that they provide concessions and some relief to the American people so that we can again be competitive in the world, we can regain our status and our strength as an economic power, we can regain our status and strength as a, as a military power. I believe in Reagan's principles of peace through strength and I feel that we have done the opposite in that. We're getting outmaneuvered by Vladimir Putin. He, uh, you know, he's a, an evil person but he's geopolitically smart. We've put ourselves in a terrible situation when you look at Crimea. Syria and many of these uh, international problems because we have no strategy. We have no geopolitical, uh, you know, st strategy to try to solve these problems and to retain our status in the world. But it's a great question, Martin, and I really thank you. And sorry for being long-winded, but it's uh, all important reasons why I'm running for Congress, and I, I will stand up for these issues and fight, you know, using my uh, abilities as a, a lawyer and, a, and with my knowledge of the Constitution. So thank you. Let's take with that. Let's take Joe next, if we can. Joe, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Joe, where are you from, and what's your question, please? I'm from the town of Vianna or Camden area, and and my question is, I well, I was wondering if you're aware of the the uh, federal federal trust that's trying to the, the fe federal trust that the Indians are having put into the south of Route 49, Wood Creek, and all the way up through Fish Creek of the land uh, a land claim. And it's an agreement that came before our town board uh, last week, and uh, it takes in below, actually north of uh, Verona, right through Sylvan Beach and up into 49. And I'm wondering if she's aware of it and if she has any plans on that particular issue. And thank you for doing as much as you're doing, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. And uh, you just hit my sweet spot. I've been doing this for 10 years. I represent the real Oneida Indians, Melvin Phillips from Vernon. I have been fighting this particular battle in court last year when this issue uh, came before the county legislatures in Oneida and, uh, and uh, also in Madison County. I've been fighting it tooth and nail against uh, Halberter and his corrupt dictatorship. By the way, he's not a real Oneida. I'm one of the people who stood up and uh, discovered that. Um, this is all a fraudulent scheme to try to prop up his casino interests, and, to, and he's basically – either paid off or intimidated politicians that are afraid to stand up to him, which is why he's probably spending several hundred thousand dollars on this particular race, which he announced Friday, to try to make sure that I don't get elected in this congressional position. This is a federal issue. I have been a, an attorney representing formerly Dave Townsend, myself, uh, legislator Chad Davis, and Melvin Phillips, who's a bona fide uh, Oneida Indian who's against this land and the trust. It would be the most devastating thing to happen to our communities in Oneida and Madison County. I am fighting it tooth and nail. It is a disaster. Uh, it will hurt our property values. It will cause the major decline of this region. Uh, I don't understand why the county executive is in there trying to negotiate with these towns and manipulate them into taking pennies in exchange for almost a billion dollars in overall back taxes owed, owed by the Oneida Nation. Um, it's a tragedy, in my estimation, of epic proportions, um, and I'm glad, Joe, that you realize it. I just wish more and more residents would, would understand how terrible this deal is. Um, it, it gives up water rights. It gives up our rights as a uh, individual citizens. 
You're going to end up having, uh, you know, the police powers that Ray Halberter is going to have um, as a as a dictator of Oneida Nation. By the way, most of the Oneidas who disagree with them get nothing, and uh, and we're all going to be subject to this. And by the way, the big thing is it's unconstitutional. The federal government cannot create trust land in the state of New York, which is an original colony. And if we can get the resources to get this done, uh, we can win this. We have to get to the Supreme Court. Unfortunately, our corrupt governor and I'll dare say other politicians, including Richard Hanna, have rubber stamped this Oneida deal. They did not see the map last year when it was passed that takes, and I'll add to Joe's, it's not just Vienna, the entire town of Augusta, the entire town of Verona, the entire town of uh, Vernon, almost all of Vienna and parts of Sylvan Beach and all the way up Fish Creek to the Lewis County border are going to be taken over and part of this kind of quasi-state federal trust land where New York, anyone who resides in that region is going to be losing their rights substantially. So I, I thank you so much for that, uh, for recognizing that, and I urge these governments not to buy into this deal. It's a terrible, terrible deal for the future of this community, and I'm sorry to be long-winded again, but you just, um, this is a, an issue that I've been fighting for 10 years. But uh, if you, you know, please contact me directly if you'd like to hear more about it. Uh, I'll be happy to talk to you. Uh, thank you. We're going to take Sharon next, if we can. Sharon, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Sharon, where are you from? And what's your question, please? I'm from Broome County, and uh, my question is, uh, what would she do to repeal Obamacare, and where can we be directed to look up uh, the true voting records? because all of these advertisements are coming out making these claims that are false. So where can people go to uh, find the truth? Uh, thank you, Sharon. Uh, you can go to ClaudiaTenney.com, and we have the uh, my votes, and we also have links to video vignettes that I've done explaining uh, what the actual votes are on, um, on this issue. Uh, as far as Obamacare, I voted against funding Obamacare, which is in, in the health care exchanges in New York. Um, I'm, sadly, Richard Hanna did not vote against uh, Obamacare, although he'll claim he voted 40 times to repeal it. The reality is the president is never going to sign repeal legislation, which is required for a repeal. The only thing that can be done is defunding it, and that's a unique power that's reserved to the House of Representatives. The House of Representatives, of which Mr. Hanna is a member, is the only branch of government which has the power of the purse, which means even if, if they don't want to fund a war or an initiative like Obamacare, they can vote to defund it, and Mr. Hanna voted against defunding it and he voted against delaying Obamacare, which has been a disaster for so many uh, individuals and small business, including our own. Um, they've put our company at great risk with this uh, passage and the implementation of Obamacare. I will, if I go to Congress, I will do everything I can to defund and eliminate Obamacare. Thank with you. With that, question, let's take Jerry. another question and switch gears a little bit with Joanne. Joanne, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Joanne, where are you from, and what's your question, please? Uh, Broome County, New York, Binghamton area. Our Welcome question and go has ahead. to do. Our question has to do with Startup New York, and as small uh, business owners, why is New York giving unfair advantages to businesses coming in from out of the state? Oh, uh, I love this question. Thank you so much, Joanne, for asking this. This is one of my other favorite topics. Startup New York is the most fraudulent, one of the most. I can't say there's so many things coming out of this governor that are fraudulent. Startup New York is a $240 million advertising campaign put forth by Governor Cuomo to run ads for his governor's reelection and for his future presidential aspirations. The program has not a single business signed up for it. Um, it requires that you have to move into a SUNY campus. There's all these different uh, things that are go with it. It's really a phony initiative. It hurts small businesses. I don't know if you indicated you were a small business owner. Um, what it does is it, it, if you're a small, for example, our business, we've been around for 68 years. We do not get any tax breaks and benefits after 68 years of paying taxes, uh, complying with all of our laws, and now somebody can move on to a SUNY campus within a stone's throw from us and start a business with no taxes, uh, with uh, no income taxes to their employees, and at the end of 10 years, you know, they'll get up and leave. 
And in the meantime, in that 10-year period of time, they very well could have put us out of business after all the, you know, the commitment we've made to New York State. And, and it's a terrible plan, and uh, I, I, it, there's no wonder. If it was such a great plan, why do we continue to have businesses moving out continue, every day, every week, every day people are moving out of New York? And um, it has been panned, by the way, so you know, by nearly every credible, um, really every credible uh, economic uh, organization from the heritage to uh, v various groups around the state and around the country saying that this is just a phony economic initiative. And, and that's all it is. It, I call it the uh, $240 million in taxpayer money to promote the governor and uh, to make people think that things are great in New York. And uh, unfortunately, the, um, that's not the case. We need to reduce taxes and reduce the size of government, as I continually vote for in spite of the negative ads that you're seeing about me. I don't know if you joined the call late. I have never voted for a tax increase in New York. All of my bills are for reduction in taxes, um, reduction in the size of government, reduction in mandates. Um, it's been, um, it's been uh, you know, quite a... Uh, quite a ride working in New York State with the Democratic machine running things. Thank you so let's much take for another question, qu Joanne. Sorry about that, Claudia. Uh, let's take another question before we do. Last call for two things. If you want to ask a question, press zero, 00 on the keypad on your phone. And if you'd like to provide us your email address, please press 77 seven on the keypad on your phone. Sue's next. Sue, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Sue, where are you from? And what's your question, please? Um, I'm from the Camden area, and um, I'm very concerned over all the illegal people coming in our country and getting a free ride on the backs of all the rest of us. I work two jobs right now, and every every time I turn around, there's more people coming in that I have to provide for. I feel bad for these people. I understand their country is poor, and they want to come here for prosperity. I don't have a problem with that. But I have two sister-in-laws that came here legally. It cost them a fortune to become an American citizen. And this just is so unfair. And I'd like to know what can you do to secure our borders? That They take an oath. The president takes an oath to secure our borders. What can be done? Thank you, Sue. I love this question. I am totally opposed to this phony amnesty, amnesty scheme they keep talking about. I, like you, have friends and family and a lot of people out there who want to legally come into this country, and they're standing in line to do it legally. Why are we rewarding people whose first act is to violate our laws? And we need to secure the border. It's something we've never done. It was promised back in the days of Ronald Reagan to secure the border. I've signed a pledge that I will not support any amnesty program. I fear that my opponent, Richard Hanna, is about ready to do that in the state, in the U.S. Congress that's coming up. They're coming, they're going to try to force an amnesty bill through. Um, I, I agree with you. I feel sorry, just like you do, for many people who want to leave their countries. We have uh, laws in place. I know if you're from Camden, you know that in the Utica area and across our state, we have what they call uh, refugee status for certain people when they come from nations where there's violence against them, such as a lot of the Bosnians many Somalians and people from, like, many, we have about 37 different nations represented in the city of Utica. Uh, those people have come here because of they're being persecuted in some way. But there's so many people waiting in line. They're either in Canada or they're waiting patiently in their countries to lawfully enter the United States. And uh, I agree with you 100%. I know it's, it's sad, you know, that people really want to come here, but we cannot support these people until we get our economic affairs in order and they need to work and they need to pay taxes and they need to join in as American citizens like everyone else. And I, I agree with you 100%. Thank you. Let's take another question with that. Let's take Linda. Linda, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Linda, where are you from and what's your question, please? Linda, you're up. Go ahead with your question, please. Linda's watching TV. Saw an ad that stated that you voted to increase sales tax. Is that true? Now, I think we've touched upon this before, but we wanted to cover it again if we could. Go ahead, please, Claudia. Yeah, I haven't voted to increase sales tax ever. I've never voted for an increase in any taxes in the state of New York as a member of the state assembly. Otherwise, I wouldn't have a perfect rating from the New York State Conservative Party. The ads, uh, the, the, the plethora of ads and direct mail pieces that are being sent out against me by you know, an aggressive, uh, you know, a super PAC from Washington, D.C., 
which is a, a pro-gay marriage, pro-gay rights uh, group um, that's running ads on behalf of Richard Hanna. There's a new group that's a pro-casino gaming, uh, gaming uh, group that is uh, all being supported by corrupt dictator Ray Halberter from the United Nations. He's also putting in hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're almost up to a million dollars in negative ads, distorting and lying about my record. I will say over and over again, I have never voted for a tax increase in the state of New York. Quite the contrary. The only tax decrease that has come before us um, as a standalone bill, other than the New York State budget, and actually none of those were tax decreases either, um, was in December 2011. I voted for the largest middle class tax cut to income tax in 58 years in New York, and that was in 2011. That's the only cut we've had in taxes for income. And I vote against the increase in uh, the United County sales tax, so where I'm a resident, until the county stands up and requires all of our citizens, include, including the United Nation, to pay their fair share of taxes. I will, I will continue to vote against any extenders or any sales taxes um, for, the, for Oneida County or anywhere else. I mean, our taxes are too high as it is. Um, but thank you for the question. Let's switch gears and go with Clarice next. Welcome to our telephone town hall meeting, Clarice. Where are you from and what's your question, please? I'm from Oxford, New York, and I know this isn't within the budget or anything, but my question is where does this penny stand when it comes to the Sharia law? You're talking about the the extremist Sharia law that uh, is now being yes. perpetrated on Florida, even New York tech. I understand that Florida already has uh, taken it into vote, and eventually New York's going to come there. Where would you stand? Uh, I am totally opposed to it. We have um, <laughs> that was that was certain. <laughs> Let's take Jean next if we can. Jean, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Jean, uh, where are you from and what's your question, please? I'm from Chenango County, Oxford, New York. Our town of Oxford was the first t in the county to ban fracking in the village of Oxford. We are still having a lot of problems. There's a lot of false information out there about fracking, and it hasn't been proven Yet, the studies have not been proven about our health, our water, and et cetera. And I love Claudia. I am for her 100%, and I hope she's behind us, too, for our communities. What's the question? Stands. About Where do I stand on, on natural gas exploration? Yes. Is that the Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. As far as... Uh, I support it, and I know a lot of people are worried about the uh, studies that come out, but we keep saying let's the, let the science dictate. Um, just so people know, I've sat in front of numerous uh, people uh, who are experts, sci uh, scientists, college professors from Cornell, Duke University, numerous on both sides of the issue. And each time, even in Duke and with the Cornell University, they have failed to show that natural gas migration is what's contaminating the water. The problem, if anything, that's occurred in Pennsylvania and other areas is the failure to regulate the uh, byproduct of the fracking fluid that comes up after the natural gas has been uh, removed from the, from the earth. And until we provide adequate resources from the state government and our local governments to regulate that, we, we have to do that if we're going to allow the, the natural gas to, allow, to give us a boom for our economy. Um, right now, uh, the so-called process of vertical hydrofracking, as they call it, or natural gas exploration, has been going on in New York for nearly 50 years in the western part of New York, although it's a, it, and the difference is it's highly regulated. Um, in western New York, the local governments and the townships all regulate uh, the natural gas exploration to preserve their environment, and they're doing it successfully, and they're putting somewhere between 250 and 300 million into their economy. Uh, because of their natural gas exploration, you can go out to western New York and virtually every school, church, um, government institution is living off of a natural gas well, and it's highly regulated, which keeps it safe, and I think it can be done safely. Um, I just think we need to give ourselves the option. I think the governor needs to get off the dime and uh, make a decision. Um, we've, we, we have abundant natural gas resources, but we have to do it safely, and, that, and that's my position on it. Thank you. Let's take another question right away if we can. Let's take Beth. 
Beth, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Beth, where are you from, and what's your question, please? I'm from Woodgate, New York, and my question is, um, where does Claudia stand with regard to homeschooling and charter schools? And it is also my understanding that charter schools um, are funded by taxpayer dollars, the same as public schools. So why would Mr. Brindisi and some of the other politicians be against the charter schools if they are performing better and turning out better students than the public school? Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm totally support homeschooling. I think that many people, that's a, a right that we have to choose to, ch to educate our children. Um, I have sort of mixed reviews on charter schools. I think it's acceptable in some areas where you can really prove that we have underperforming high schools for one reason or another. But it is true that our taxpayer money is used to fund all these school districts. I think that, uh, you know, charter schools should be an option for people, but I also think that when you, ha when you allow a charter school, you're actually taking money away from using taxpayer money to fund a school that does not have to have the same mandates that a, that a public school would have. So my concern would be trying to create an equal but level playing field when you when you, when it comes to education issues, but it is certainly within you know the option of parents to have homeschooling and to choose a charter school, um, or even even a parochial school or private school for their children. But uh, I do think that we have to apply these rules equally. Either you have to eliminate the unfunded mandates to the regular school districts, the public school districts, or you have to make them all equal for both sides because. Um, yeah, it's a tough question, but I mean that's. I think that they have their. I think a lot of charter schools are very necessary in some areas like New York City, where there really just is no hope for some of these uh, districts, these public school districts. So um, it doesn't seem to be as popular of an issue up here. Some are successful, some aren't. Uh, you know, that's. It, it still uh, remains to be seen. But thank you for the question. Let's take another question right away. We're going to try and get as many as we can in, in, our, in the course of an hour, of which we've got about 12 minutes left. Mike is next. Mike, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Mike, where are you from, and what's your question, please? Uh, yes, I'm from uh, Herkimer County. And um, my only concern, really, uh, is the $17 trillion uh, deficit we have. And it's my opinion that the only way we're going to get rid of this deficit is we need to create jobs, but also at the same time, which I don't like, but we have no choice because we got ourselves into a mess, we got to increase revenue. So what, my, what do you think about reducing the corporate tax rate, not the 25% 25 25 like they've been talking about, to zero, no corporate tax, to get these companies to come back in here and create uh, good jobs to, to put people on a tax roll? But then if you want to make it revenue neutral, then maybe in making another progressive tax rate on the individual side and like people that make over a million dollars or more, uh, you create a 45% uh, tax bracket. And, but, I, but at the same time, the 47% of America, of America that pays no tax, uh, maybe uh, creating a national sales tax so these low-income people that have no skin in the game that pay absolutely nothing and on top of not paying any tax that they get their withholding back, all their withholding, because I prepare taxes for a living. They, these people get all their withholding back. They get all these refundable credits, earned income credit, additional child tax credit, daycare credit, on and on and on. Uh, 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 the American Opportunity Credit, these refundable credits. Hold on for a second. Let's have uh, Claudia comment on this, Mike. You had some great thoughts, but go ahead, Claudia. Uh, all great thoughts and uh, all going right to the heart of what's exactly wrong with this country right now is, yes, our big prob one of the biggest problems we have is our debt. It compromises our strength uh, across the world. Um, we've lost our economic strength because the more that we go to China and the more that we have a deficit when it comes to our import-export re uh, ratios, we're at it causes a problem, and that's why we've lost so many jobs to overseas and why we're losing to many of these countries like China and India and even in South America who are, are uh, not charging taxes. We have the highest co corporate tax rate in the world. So let me try to hit on a, some of the issues that Mike had. We have to reduce our tax rates. 
We also have to make ourselves competitive, and he raises an interesting point. A national sales tax has been advocated by a number of groups, like a fair, uh, the Fair Tax Group You know, talks about abolishing the IRS. I think there's many federal programs that we could eliminate and uh, many uh, funding initiatives that we could get ourselves out of as we as we phase them out to reduce the burden on our taxpayers so we can reduce the cost. And we can talk, and, and Mike talks about the exact formula that creates jobs, and it sounds counterintuitive to many people, but if you reduce taxes, it is always proven and has always happened, we increase the number of jobs and the number of people working. And it sounds counterintuitive, but it is the magic formula. If you reduce the size of government, you reduce taxes, you are going to see an increase in jobs, and you're going to see more and more people bring their jobs back from overseas, more and more companies, as they see the United States being competitive again, and providing, uh, you know, a competitive atmosphere for jobs. Right now, we don't have a competitive atmosphere. We don't have enough people wanting to get out and get a job because there's no the, the government's covering everything. They have no incentive. They can make more staying home. He points out the earned income tax credit and many of these other credits that people are receiving that are just incentive for them to not go out and work. We need to make it a lot more appealing to work than not work because we have many able-bodied young people, middle-aged people that are working, and I do find it interesting, and I think Mike might agree with this, you go places and some of the people you see working are, tend to be the older people who have come back into the workforce because they still have a strong work ethic. And I think there's a lot of hope for America if we continue to inspire people to come back to work. So I think, Mike, you, got the, you, got the, you hit the, the hot-button issue. It is our deficit. It is our taxes that's keeping us uncompetitive in the world. If we can create more jobs, create more products that we can sell to people in other countries, we're going to rebuild our economic strength, which really is the strength of the United States and always has been. So thank you so much for that great question. Mark has a great question. Let's take Mark next. Mark, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Mark, where are you from and what's your great question? Um, yes, my name is Mark and I'm from uh, Morrisville, New York. Uh, my question is, I'm 48 years old. I'm a lifelong conservative Republican. I've had many candidates who want to get my vote, and they will express to me the conservative Republican small government uh, views that you express. But for some reason, by the time those people get to Washington, their views soften or change substantially. How do I know that if I vote for you, that you will hold to the philosophy or the opinions that you now express. Thank you. Yes, thank you for the question. And uh, I ran for the first time in 2010. I attended Tea Party rallies. I described myself as a less taxes, less government, we're taxed enough already, uh, conservative that I've been my whole life. Uh, and I went to Albany, and in my very first year, I was the top conservative in New York. And I continue to hold that title throughout my years in New York, and uh, so I said what I was going to do, and I did it, and I've lived up to my um, conservative principles, and I will do that as a representative in Washington. I don't care about if I have to vote against raising the debt ceiling, I will, because I think it's important, or vote to, against it, I will, regardless of whether, you know, the media, uh, the liberal media comes out and criticizes me for doing what's right for America and for my constituents. I believe deeply in these values, and uh, you can look at my record. I, I, you know, Richard Hanna campaigned with me in 2012 as a Tea Party conservative. He is now the third most liberal member of Congress in the Republican Cong caucus, third out of 233. So I said I was conservative, and I got there, and I'm still number one. So thank you very much for the call, and I promise that I will maintain my conservative values, or you can vote me out. I, I, I w if I'm not conservative, I wouldn't be there. Let's take Barbara next. Barbara has a good question, too. Barbara, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Barbara, where are you from, and what's your question, please? I'm from Hastings, New York, and thank you, Claudia, for running against Hannah. I believe that our nation is and always should be one nation under God. What do you believe, Claudia? Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, a lot of people talk about the, the notion of uh, the separation of church and state, but the truth of the matter is, that our country was actually founded on Judeo-Christian principles, and it only says in the that in the First Amendment that we shall not the, that we shall not have the establishment of a religion by the government, but we shall allow the free exercise thereof. And so it isn't 
coincidental that if you go to the Supreme Court and you go to just about every courtroom and just about everywhere in this country, and we still swear, we, I take a pledge every day in the New York State Assembly, you know, that we are under God, and that's on virtually every federal building and all across this country. And for people to deny that our Judeo-Christian ethics are part of our, what our moral compass is and what we stand for, uh, many of the things that we stand for as Americans are based and rooted in Judeo-Christian ethic. And, you know, I, I, I don't agree with the, the concept it's got to be separation of church and state. All that means is that we shall not have a religion as, the, as we have in maybe many of the uh, Middle Eastern countries where the religion is the government. We have a free exercise clause, and our, our principles are rooted in Judeo-Christian ethic. And, you know, I think a lot of people try to say that we're not a Christian uh, uh, society, but we are. So, Let's take Rosemary time. next. Here's Rosemary. Okay. Rosemary, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Rosemary, where are you from? And what's your question, please? Rosemary, go ahead. You're up. I'll read Rosemary's question. Cuomo voted okay. for the Indian deal. Can we repeal that? We are trying to do – thanks for the question, Rosemary. We are trying to do that. Um, I've been fighting this in court since 2008. Uh, the recent deal last year uh, is I'm not I'm no longer an attorney on the case because I made a decision to run for Congress, so I turned it over to another lawyer. Uh, but that case I'm still actively following, and I just can't be an attorney of record. Um, we are fighting it in court, which is right right about now our only hope, since uh, so many of the people in our legislature uh, voted for it. Um, you may not know, but I wrote a letter that was about oh, several pages long, 10 pages with attachments that I sent to each and every member of the State Assembly and the State Senate. I emailed it, I hand-delivered it, and I mailed it, uh, first-class first mail to every one of them, warning about not voting for this Oneida deal, and yet it passed uh, by two majorities. I used every second of, I had on the floor in the Assembly fighting against this provision, and they still passed it nonetheless. So our only hope is to hopefully repeal this um, in the courts. So I thank you for the question, and I and I hope you follow it, and thanks for your support. Uh, we really need to repeal this casino deal. Thanks. Let's take uh, another question. We're getting close to the end of our hour. If you had a question, didn't get it answered, whether you press a zero or not, please leave us a voicemail at the end with your name, your phone number, and preferably your email address so we have a chance to get back to you. So leave us that voicemail, but you've got to wait until the end of the call to do that. We need that contact information to get back to you if we can. We're going to take Al, and then we're going to wrap up after that. Al, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Al, where are you from, and what's your question, please? Hi, Claudia. This is Al from Endwell. I think one of the best things that we've had, tool that we have is your comparison sheet, your record against Hannah's. Keeping that in mind, there's been many faults uh, from the Hannah camp. What's the chances of us getting a bullet point of what he stated in your answers in brief bullet points that I think that the people that are for you could then distribute? I realize that we don't have enough money to combat what he has, so the way to do it is grassroots, get that sheet out there and hit hit the streets and make it known. What do you think? I think it's a great idea, and thank you, Al. Uh, we've been doing that. Uh, obviously, you've, you've seen the side-by-side -side comparison that we've been delivering door-to-door, -door, and we will be doing – we did one a direct mail piece just showing the comparison. Um, I'm not engaging in a negative campaign against Mr. Hanna as he is doing with me. All I'm doing is listing his votes and the, the citation on the vote, the date, and the HR bill that he voted on compared to my votes on uh, equivalent uh, issues in the State Assembly. And uh, we're not saying he's a liar. We're begging him to debate us. Um, if he thinks I'm a liar, he needs to put me on the public stage and show everyone just who's lying in this particular race. Um, I have called for a debate. I've, re I've uh, accepted every debate that's been offered. I think Mr. Hanna says she's a liar. I'd rather vote, uh, you know, rather debate a Democrat. I sincerely believe, as also a constituent and, and, a, and a candidate in this race, that it isn't about Mr. Hanna and whether he thinks it would be more fun to, to uh, debate a Democrat. It's about the people having an opportunity to see who their representative is going to be in Congress and how they address open questions before the public, on TV, on radio, or whatever forum we can possibly do it in. And the more that we are together in a public way to see the contrast between my record and Mr. Hanna's record in Congress, the better off 
the people in this community and this district will be as they can judge for themselves who would who they see as their better representative in Congress. And I think Mr. Hanna's, you know, disingenuous and just claiming that he just refuses to debate. I've also heard as I've traveled throughout the district that Mr. Hanna refuses to do town hall meetings. I will be doing a town hall meeting tomorrow in Bainbridge, and I encourage anyone if they're nearby or they have an opportunity to come to Bainbridge at 7 o'clock tomorrow. Um, I will be, uh, you know, there in person. You can ask me any question you want. I'm there to answer the questions. I take this job seriously, this campaign seriously. I'm running because I believe we need to change the way this country is run. We need to stand up for conservative principles. So many great phone calls. We had Mike talking about taxes, um, all kinds of people who are obviously very uh, concerned about where we're going. We need an honest representative that's going to, you know, dig in and try to solve the problem. And, uh, the, you know, the answer that's always worked has been less government and lower taxes, and that's what I'm going to fight for. I'm going to make sure that we do everything we can to try to stop this lawless president, hopefully remove him in two years. Uh, but, you know, we're going to be fighting all the way, and I encourage everybody to, you know, to stand up and, and, uh, and find out what's going on. Look into our voting records. Uh, you can go to ClaudiaTenney.com. We have a comparison. We have links to video vignettes where I discuss what each one of these votes are that Mr. Hanna is trying to claim or his gay rights uh, supporters from the Unity PAC and uh, the casino gaming interests who are putting literally a million dollars into his campaign, talking about, you know, phony record that I have in the, in the assembly instead of talking about Mr. Hanna's liberal voting record as the third most liberal member of Congress. He doesn't want to talk about that. That's why he doesn't want to debate. He's in a Republican primary. He doesn't want to talk about be, having a liberal voting record. I think the Republican primary voters have the right to know why Mr. Hanna voted on certain bills, why he has a liberal voting record on everything that counts, and he needs to answer to the public. I will do that. No matter, if I get elected, I will do that. I will conduct town halls. I'll do whatever I can to make sure that I'm listening to the constituents and, uh, and we're fighting to, to, to revive the 22nd Congressional District economically. So thank you, Al, for the great call, and keep distributing those side-by-sides. We'll be putting out hopefully another flyer by next week uh, with more bullet points exactly about uh, my voting record. And, uh, and finally, I just want to say I wouldn't be the top conservative in New York if I voted to raise taxes and voted with Shelley Silver. In fact, I am the only and first legislator to call for his resignation in the state assembly. And, um, you know, he's, I still renew my calls for it. He continues to be corrupt, and we, t we need to get rid of him. And uh, I've taken that stand. Many people have been afraid to do that, but I will stand up to Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, and, and uh, uh, President Obama continually until we uh, get some kind of economic revival and some justice in this country, and it means a lot to me. So I thank you very much for the call, and uh, I'll take out others if we're able.